Hello, today we're going to talk about um, the support config utility for SUSE Linux Enterprise servers. Uh, this is a utility that's a, a bash based script that collects system information that we use and support heavily to help um, troubleshoot the server and issues that result and arise on the server. So today I'm going to show kind of how to use it and how to use the support config and how to troubleshoot uh, some things with it. So first off, we'll go to the command line. And I'm going to go ahead and switch to root, since this is a tool. Um, first off, um, the support config comes from the support utils package. So you can list all the utilities in that package, plus the man pages with the RPM command. And then um, there are various options. Now, to as far as um, getting a support config, if you just run support config, you are, and then your, your case number with SUSE, <coughs> excuse me, that will start and run a support config. And it tells you the file name it's going to use. It embeds the service request into the file name. And here you'll see that it, it gathers um, various pieces of information as it goes. And um, all the information is stored inside of um, the directory listed for the data directory. That di entire directory and its contents will be uh, compressed into um, a XZ compressed file. And with the dash U option will automatically be uploaded to the uh, SUSE North American FTP server via the HTTPS protocol um, to help with secure uploads. And you'll see that um, various things are skipped because either they're not present or they've been turned off. Most of the time support config is the intent is to gather as much information as possible so that we can uh, lower the resolution times on issues reported to SUSE. So the more information we have when we're presented with a problem, the faster we can get it resolved. And we, as we gather the information, um, there is a minimum amount of information that can be gathered and you can turn various features off and we'll discuss how to do that. You can either toggle them off or you can get a minimum support fit and include certain items that you want. Um, and you'll see here that we've created the tarball. This is again using curl to connect to the FTP server and it's done. Um, by default, it's they're stored, support configs are stored in the var log directory, excuse me, with the MD5 sum of the tarball so that you can, we can validate that the tarball was correct when it, after it uploaded. <clears throat> now, Let's talk a little bit about some of the features um, that support config has. Uh, so first off, um, the dash U, which we used, um, allows us to upload to with HTTPS. If you used a dash A, it would use FTP ES, um, extended service there to upload the file to the FTP server. Now, Let's see what's now the various now you know you noticed when the support group was scrolling through, we had various things that it was collecting, various groups of things being collected. If you use the dash F option, this will list all the features that are being collected. Um, most, if not all of these, are turned on by default. And so if you wanted to, let's say, um, turn one of them off, um, you could run a support config dash O, and then you would list the various features with a comma separated list that you wanted to toggle to the opposite state. Now, this is a little bit, this option is misunderstood a little bit. The, um, the dash O does not turn a feature off or on, it toggles it to its opposite state. So if it's turned on by default, which most of them are, then a dash O will turn it off. If it's turned off by default, then a dash O 
and including that feature will toggle it on. So that's how we're going to kind of that's how the dash o works. Now, some people ask them, well, how do I know if a feature is turned on or off? Well, you can oops, turn my cap locks off here. You can run a dash capital C, and that will create a default supportconfig.com file with all of the options. And if we edit that file, you'll see that all the options are in a with a dash one. Whether well, if it's set to one, it's turned on. If it's set to zero, it's turned off. And you'll see that you could then change them. Now, you can change the default by modifying this file and turning things on and off that you want to be persistent as you run support configs. And then the dash O would do the opposite of that. And here's some various other items. Now, one thing that we want to do is um, with the upload options. We can change that to the, um, let's take a look at the, uh, the dot .com just one more time. You notice here these two options, the upload targets. So we have by default, there, I've got, we have variables defined for the, in this case, the North American um, upload target. So you could delete those two lines. Let's say we wanted to, to change that. And now I'm gonna delete all the other options and just include these upload targets. And my intent here is to change it so that it will upload by default to the uh, European, SUSE European uh, FTP server. And so in that case, you just change the North America tag to, oops, to EMEA and then save. Uh, once you save that file, now by default, um, all support configs will be uploaded to the EMEA, the SUSE EMEA FTP server instead of the North American one. Okay, now let's look at um, how to troubleshoot a little bit with this. And if we, let's go in, we're gonna open up a browser and we'll see that with, with this particular support config, we've run a support config analysis tool against it to get a, a report, the support config analysis report, which we'll talk about in another video. But here we'll see that we've got um, uh, various things that um, um, are wrong. And in this case, we've got um, Logical Volume Manager having an issue. So let's take a look at how we might look at uh, that report. So the support config is compressed. So I'm going to extract the support config. Which is that dot .txz file. If we go into the directory, you'll notice that we have um, various files based on the topics and the features we wanted to collect. The purpose is to group um, commands, configuration files, log files, errors, and other things into one location so that we can then troubleshoot that issue. So let's take a look at, since we have an issue with the LVM, Let's pull up the LVM file. Now, mo the, most of the support config files are arranged in a similar way where we start by doing an RPM validation of the, um, of the package, in this case, LVM. You'll notice that it hasn't found any um, problems with um, files owned by that package since it was installed. So there's probably no need to reinstall the LVM package because everything seems to be good there. And then we come down, we start seeing various commands. You notice down here we have a configuration file. So if I was troubleshooting this, then this is the first place I'd want to look for because the support config analysis report indicated there was an issue with LVM. And we can see that here with these warnings where the, uh, um, 
these filters have been, in this case, the filter has been rejected and that we're missing um, a device. So this is where we start. Now, some other ways to, and as far as troubleshooting that, we're not gonna talk about actually fixing that issue, just how to find it and be aware of it from the support config. Another way to use the support config is to simply extract it, change to the directory, and then grep throughout for various problems. So in this case, I grep for error to see are there any errors that stand out that are meaningful that we could look for. So grep through all the files, and then you can, you can see the files here. And if you include a dash n, you'll actually get uh, the line number that that particular error is on. So you have the file and the line number, and then the string that contains the word error. So that's another good way to use support config. And um, um, the man pages are helpful to talk about the various options that we need to use. Another options that are used frequently is a dash L, lowercase L, which includes all the log files and as many rotated log files as can, kind of a little more complete as to what we're using as far as what we're gathering. Um, the dash A turns all the features on and tries to gather as much information as possible. That's a dash capital A. And this dash I, this is an interesting one um, that's used to um, it, in, it runs, it configures support config to gather a minimum amount of information and then only includes those features listed in the keyword list, a comma separated list. It works like the dash O, only this time it shuts everything off and only turns on those things that you inclu uh, include in the keyword list. Um, and here's the exp explanation of the dash O. The dash X, this is not often used. This is a little bit um misunderstood what support config does here is it turns everything on and only turns off those features that are in the keyword list so it's a little works a little bit differently than people think um, if you have if support config ever has a problem where it's um it's paused or it's hung um, doesn't seem to be completing this da dash w which stands for a trace weight or weight, it will log all the commands on the console as it executes them and tell you how long it spends in each of those uh, commands. So it can be useful to try and find out which command support config is running that's taking a long time. And then perhaps you might look into that, um, validate that particular command and its RPM to make sure that it's healthy. And maybe there's a, a bug or an issue with that command, but this is a good way to find out which command it is. So that's um, support config uh, in a nutshell. And um, later we'll be talking about the support config analysis report that analyzes support config.